Now, we started this with me saying that the general linear test is really going to end up being the same as our analysis of variance. So let's clean up our terms a little bit here and see why it's actually identical. Let's tackle the denominator. In this case, we have the sums of squares error from the full model divided by the degrees of freedom error for the full model. Well, we know this to be the mean square for error. That's the same mean square for error we developed before. So the denominator of this test right now has the same denominator as the analysis of variance test. Let's tackle this piece, the sums of squares error for the reduced model and the degrees of freedom error for the reduced model. Well, let's step back and look at what our reduced model is. This is a model where all we're predicting for individuals is the mean. And so the sums of squares for this model, the error term for this model, is simply going to be the sums of squares total. This is the deviation of every person to the grand mean. So the sums of squares error for the reduced model is really just sums of squares total and degrees of freedom total. We have one final component to go, the sums of squares error for the full model and the degrees of freedom error for the full model. Well, remember, our full model is the model in which we're fitting taws, and so we're removing the treatment offsets from that error term. So this will leave the sums of squares error, the error that's around the treated means, or said differently, the error between an individual's actual score and the predicted score, a score predicted using those treatment offsets. So this, in the denominator and numerator, will just be the sums of squares error and degrees of freedom error. And so, if we actually find these differences, remember, we know the sums of squares will add, so sums of squares error plus sums of squares treatment is equal to sums of squares total, and degrees of freedom for the analysis of variance simply add, degrees of freedom error plus degrees of freedom treatment equals degrees of freedom total, and so in this model, we have sums of squares total and sums of squares error, degrees of freedom total and degrees of freedom error, the only possible difference between these two the sums of squares for treatment and the degrees of freedom for treatment. So in one fell swoop, we actually get back to the mean square for treatment and the mean square for error. So our general linear test, even though we came to this formula in a slightly different way, in a way that we were couching our test in terms of reduction in error, we still end up with an F statistic that's formed on the mean square, the variance of treatments divided by a mean square for error. And so, Given this general linear test or the analysis of variance test statistic, we still end up with, under the null hypothesis, a fischer snedeker distribution with two numerator degrees of freedom and 97 denominator degrees of freedom. That is, even before we did this study, as long as we knew how many groupings we have and how many individuals we'll be sampling, we know what types of values of F we're likely to get simply by chance alone. And given all the inferential logic we've developed in the past, we can test this hypothesis in the same way. We simply do our study, calculate these terms, and find our observed value of f. If our observed value of f is in the critical region, yields a p-value less than alpha, in this case, let's say less than 0.05, we can reject the null hypothesis. And rejecting a null hypothesis in this case is akin to saying we believe whatever groupings we've formed in our sample actually exist in the population. That in the population, the factor under consideration is truly used in forming individual scores. So either way we come to our inference, either the analysis of variance or general linear test approach, we'll be able to test hypotheses now about entire factors. And this will considerably increase the number of applications for our statistical theory.